You have to be permanently present on site to be able to control those kinds of aesthetics and alignments. Business of Architecture, episode 274. Hello, Architect Nation. I'm your host, Enix Sears, and this is the show where you'll discover tips, strategies, and secrets for growing an impactful and profitable architecture practice. On today's episode, you'll hear an excerpt from the weekly group coaching call that I run with architecture and design firm owners from around the world. In this excerpt of the group coaching call, I speak with a South African-based architect. She asks how she can use the additional information she has in her building information model to provide greater value to the client and greater compensation for her services. Uh, The reason why I wanted to share this particular excerpt from this recent coaching call with you is because I feel that it touches on a lot of things that I get questions about. Primarily, how to communicate clearly the value that you provide as an architect and how to capture that value in the way you're compensated. Now, before we hop on to today's episode, I want to give a shout out to Craig Williamson, architect, who is a principal with GAA Architects. Craig recently sent me an email after he listened to episode number 255 of the Business of Architecture show, How to Earn Six Figures as an architect. On that episode, one of my points for increasing your income in architecture is to choose a profitable niche where there's less competition and valuable services to be provided for clients who can pay for those services. So Craig heard that, it resonated with him and he wrote in, he says, I wish these podcasts were around when I was coming up in the profession. I recently watched your How to Make Six Figures in Architecture and wish that we could connect with some of your viewers that want to implement your suggestions, particularly becoming a specialist in industrial architecture. As you said, it's not for everyone, but I agree it's a good path for those that want to make a living wage in this business. Our firm has a high profit margin. We compensate commensurately yet we struggle to find top talent. Feel free to put our name out there as a firm someone can join to follow your good advice. So there you have it. If you're looking for a new opportunity and you feel like this might be a fit for you, you can check out GAA Architects over at their website, gaaarchitects.com. They have some great projects on the page and Craig is obviously a business-minded principal, which if you are a listener of the podcast, you'll know can be a great advantage when it comes to making the kind of impact that you wanna make in the profession. So with that, thank you, Craig, for sending that email in. If anyone listening to this, if you listening to this right now would like to reach me with comments, feedback about the podcast or anything of the sort, you can write to me personally by writing enoch at businessofarchitecture.com. Today's episode is sponsored by Gusto. Gusto is an online service that makes managing your payroll easy. One of the firm leaders in my Architect CEO program said that Gusto has been a game changer for his business, allowing him to have big firm tools even though he has just a few employees. Running your payroll with Gusto takes seven minutes on average. You can also add benefits and HR support to take care of your team and keep your business safe. As a podcast listener, get three months free when you run your first payroll. Go to gusto.com forward slash BOA to get your free three months and support the show. Now, with that, let's get on with today's show. All right, I can see Clara has a question. Clara, what is your question? I can unmute your line. Let's see if you have a mic here. Clara, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Welcome. Um, Can you hear me? I can. Okay. So the question is, uh, for a very small, short project that I um, pitched for and got, which is just to design a cottage, uh, for which I charge too little, unknowingly, they've given me a massive compliment. What I did is that I sent them kind of an audit sheet showing what the normal price would have been for that size project and how much I was charging. And uh, they thanked me profusely and said, I got it absolutely perfectly what they wanted. And I just thanked them. I said, I'm gonna use that in my marketing campaign. But in doing this project, obviously I build up more because I build in BIM, you know, I design in BIM. So there is a lot more information that I can extricate very quickly out of the CAD file. So I wonder if there's a, a way to target that specifically a little bit later, sort of saying, you know, for 
X amount more, you can have full detailed drawings. You know, I just did council drawings. I did not do uh, detailed drawings, but positions of the windows and all sorts of details, you know, corner ceiling plans, all of that is embedded in the model. And uh, I could issue it, but obviously I want to somehow justify issuing that for a certain fee. What are the two or three maybe targeting things that I could do with them to make them pay more money or even advertise my services amongst their friends that are building cottages in that area? Okay, so Claire, it sounds like what I'm hearing your question is, is you did council drawings for this small cottage project. You built out the model in BIM, and so the building actually has a lot more information in that in that model than was needed for those drawings. And Correct. you have the ability to be able to give a more detailed set of drawings to these people, which they'll probably need eventually anyways. Yeah, correct. So you're wondering the best way to be able to basically upsell them to that additional service. Yeah, that's right. Okay, great. Well, first of all, and this is for everyone on the call, I love the fact that you're not just saying, okay, look, I can just print these out, I'll just do these for free, right? Because a lot of times, as architects, we think that if something doesn't cost us money or more time, that it shouldn't, you know, we should just give it away. That is like mis business mistake number one. And there's a bunch of business mistakes, number one. But uh, just give you an example, and you're totally on the right track here. I just want to give an example. Yesterday, we've, we just moved into a new house, and we have a plumbing problem, of course, with some tree roots getting into the sewer. I've had the plumbers out at my house like every single day for the past three or four days, right? And they have, I, I wanted them to run a camera down the line so they could see where the blockage is happening because it keeps on repeating, right? The guy has the camera in his truck. It's just sitting there, right? But he said, okay, cool. For me to pull out that camera, it's going to run you, um, you know, basically $95 an hour of my time. And then it's $195 an hour for the use of the camera, right? Which, you know, it's not costing that company any more theoretically you know, so we could look at that as very similar to your scenario, right? Where you have the information in the model, but you know, these guys, these plumbers, they're running a good business. They understand how it works. So I just want to reconfirm that you're absolutely on the right track, Clara. You have additional value there, and that's a great opportunity to capture that additional value that you can give them. Okay, so good job with that, first of all. Hey, Architect Nation, real fast, I want to draw your attention to May 1st through the 3rd, 2019. I'm hosting the Architect Business Summit in Chicago, Illinois, and I would love to meet you there in person. During these three days, some of the most successful architects I've had the pleasure of working with will pull back the curtain to reveal what they're doing to grow their income, freedom, and impact as firm owners. This will be the must-attend event for architecture firm owners in 2019. You won't want to miss this. Go to businessofarchitecture.com forward slash live to get information on who will be speaking and find out how to grab your ticket. Are you still there, Clara? Yes, I'm here. Okay, great. Just want to get some confirmation after my monologue there. Okay, so your no. question is, how can we upsell to them? Look, this is simply a matter of educating them about what they're going to need. Right. So a great way to do that is to ask them some questions. Have you asked them what their plans are or about their process of actually getting the cottage completed? No, I've not really. They've said something about they would have the cottage built by farm workers. So the one thing that I thought was to try and get them to a one on one meeting. They actually live in the same building in the same apartment block as me. But the one guy is very busy, and I've what I wanted to do was to get a one-on-one -on -one meeting before printing the drawings uh, or sending them the digital council drawings, and say, "Look, this is what it looks like," you know, because you can make a walkthrough, you can show all the detail, and get them excited about seeing the actual model, you know, digitally. And in that conversation, introduce the fact that there is a whole lot of other detail embedded in it, which they may or may not you know need and the one thing that i point out always is that you you know in a good design you build certain symmetries or alignments which they appreciated they mentioned in the design complement that they had seen this perfect symmetry in the cottage and i say you the, i want to tell them they will the laborers will get it wrong because 
people don't normally ascertain that and you have to be permanently present on site to be able to control those kinds of aesthetics and alignments but that the only way i thought to introduce it was through a one-on-one -on -one, you know meeting i don't want to make a video even though i can and then send it to them because it's like giving them a video for free i don't want to do that i want to rather show them the video um, yeah, so sounds like you're getting some rain. You getting some rain over there, Clara? Yeah, no, we have a beach storm at the moment here. Yeah. Where are you based out of? Johannesburg. Yeah, Johannesburg. Well, how's the water situation over there? Oh no, we're fine. Cape Town was in trouble. We're still fine. We it will be very yeah. bad in 2022. Okay, it was just Cape Town that was having the problems. Yes. Okay. All right. So yeah, you're you're totally right. Um, look, have a meeting, Clara, just like you said. Um, I would actually, I would not show them the model. I would not talk about the fact that that information already exists. That's not really a selling point. They might actually feel like you're trying to ransom them, right? If they understand that if you make it seem like it's easy to print out that information, then that might skew the conversation. What you want to do during that conversation is you want to help them to explore their own pain or the mistakes they could make. And you just want to walk them through that, that process. You just talked about the farm labors, right? So it's always good to use stories and examples. So I don't know. One thing you could do is you could just say, um, you know, so say we're in the one-on-one -on -one meeting. You could, I'm going to give you an example. You could give them, let's say you you hand them an iPhone. And you say, you know, what do you guys, or whatever kind of phone, that, what do you guys think about the iPhone? Do you think it's a beautiful device? And they're like, yeah, it's beautiful. It's fun to touch. We love how these little curves and everything. And you're like, why don't you explain to me what what is it that's beautiful about this phone? And they might say some things. They might say, well, it's kind of nice how it's curved here and it's all flat and slim and the way these buttons are positioned. And or they may say, I don't know. I just I just know it's it's nice, you know. And then you can walk them through and you can say, well, look, do you see how the designers did this here? Do you see how they did this? Do you see how this little beveled edge does this right here, how it fits in your hand? Okay. And then you can lead that into your designs. You could say, um, you know, one of the things you told me about the cottage that you really liked, you walked into it. And you notice that there was a lot of thought behind it. There was symmetry. You know, the lights were in the right place. They were equally spaced, so they weren't off center. You know, the soffits lined up, things like that. And then you could say, no, let me ask you a question. You know, how good do you think these farm laborers are at being able to pay attention to details like that? Mm, okay. And if they give the wrong answer, if they say, oh, well, they could do it just fine, you could just press on that and say, well, why do you say that? Or... Mm -hmm. Or do you really believe that? Or, you know, have you seen that work out before? And just kind of explore that with them. You know, most likely they're going to understand that that's not really the way things happen. You can share a story about another client that went down that route or someone you saw go down that route. And we know, you and I both know that that's a disaster waiting to happen. And so you just frame it in that in that thing. You say, well, look, you know, you're, you know, how much are you planning to budget towards this project? They're going to say, you know, so many rands, you're like, okay, great. So that's a huge investment. Wouldn't it be a shame to spend that much money and then to have something that you're really, you're really upset about how it turned out and it ends up being a huge problem. Okay, good. That's a good idea. Thank you. Okay. And then, then they'll say, they'll say, well, yeah, we get the point. And you'll say, well, you know, another service that I offer is this service. And then now it says you've amplified the problem and now you present the service, which is the solution to that problem. You say, look, the service does this, this, and this, and it needs to be benefit oriented. You know, um, that's why we do these more detailed drawings so we can show them exactly where the lights go, you know, and if you as the owner want to oversee that, that's fine. I recommend that you guys hire me to oversee this if you really want to get the most out of the money that you're going to pay. Now, it's going to be more expensive than just giving the farm workers the money and letting them build it, but the product you're going to get is going to be a hundred times better and it's going to hold its value better because it's going to have that intrinsic beauty that you guys like and you appreciate. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. You bet. Thank you, Clara, for the question. Stay safe there in that thunderstorm. Okay. Uh -uh. And that is a wrap. I hope you enjoyed this little sneak peek at the weekly group coaching call that I run. And this coaching call is part of the Sunshine Island Express program that I run with my partners, Eric Bobro and Richard Petrie. Uh, in that program, we help architecture firm owners, just like yourself, set up systems in their firm and deploy strategies and tactics to be able to win higher quality projects, uh, increase the profit for every project, and attract, find, and attract the ideal kind of clients 
that they want to work with to have fulfilling projects. You can find out more about that. I've put together a one hour long presentation. It's approved by the AIA for one continuing education credit. And as a podcast listener, you can access this training for free by going to architectwebinar.com. Today's episode is sponsored by Gusto. Gusto is an online service that makes managing your payroll easy. One of the firm leaders in my Architect CEO program said that Gusto has been a game changer for his business, allowing him to have big firm tools even though he has just a few employees. Running your payroll with Gusto takes seven minutes on average. You can also add benefits and HR support to take care of your team and keep your business safe. As a podcast listener, get three months free when you run your first payroll. Go to gusto.com forward slash BOA to get your free three months and support the show. As a reminder, the views expressed on this show by my guests do not represent those of the hosts, and I make no representation, promise, guarantee, pledge, warranty, contract, bond, or commitment except to help you conquer the world. Carpe diem.